Hello everyone, I'm Jadeep Singh Chahal. So it's been quite a long break. We had some videos recorded halfway, uh, could not complete them because some things, they take time. We installed the Thar suspension that had to be given time to settle down. So we'll be covering that very shortly. But uh, in the meantime, making the most of our Sunday, uh, I decided to cover a very, very special and I think the most satisfying build till date that we've done. Uh, this is a very normal looking, uh, you know, a very common vehicle that we see a lot of businessmen and uncles driving now. Your very common Gen 1 Fortuner. But uh, I think this is the most, most underrated uh, off-roading, overlanding, traveling. You, you put it in any category. This is one of the most underrated vehicles. Uh, as they call, you know, as they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure. So we've got a lot of these leaving Delhi and NCR due to the 10-year ban on diesel vehicles. Because the, this model year and this model shape came from end of 2009 till 2012, early 13, but I think only till 2012 end. So three, three and a half years of sale. And uh, they've been going for peanuts, if you could say. I'll be quoting a price. You can pick a clean example which has never been used off-road for anything close to five, five and a half, six lakhs very easily. And uh, very, very underrated vehicle. I'll, I'll be saying that a lot of times in this video. But uh, this hair is a fine example. It's been used for the last 60,000 kilometers, close to three and a half, four years, extensively all over. And it's been nothing short of satisfying and pure happiness for the cost of the build and of course the toyota reliability factor as well so this comes with your standard three liter inline four engine everybody knows it uh, the, this model year came only and only with a manual transmission and the icing on the cake is actually the all-time 4x4 so this has an all-time 4x4 close to an 80 20 split the front tires generally only have 15 to 20 percent of the full power but but the you know the the beauty of this setup is this vehicle in an overlanding situation will be crossing most obstacles where on other vehicles or other suvs even the pajero for that matter or any other even the hilux for that matter will be forced to shift into a 4x4 because sometimes you just need that little extra bit of traction and you're through so this one is going to fly through and it has been flying through without that additional effort because where needed, even that 15-20% split is very, very useful. So that is what changes the entire thing. So we, this one has a whole bunch of mods. The I, I would call it like a 90% complete project. Uh, there's nothing like a complete project. It's, it's just a myth. You always have more stuff to add on. So this vehicle, it's done like a lakh and a half kilometers, still runs like new. I, I feel these Toyota engines, I think it takes them close to 80, 90,000 to 1 lakh kilometers to actually get in the right groove and then they start feeling all smooth and the shifting gets nice. Uh, only mechanical upgrade or not even upgrade, the only mechanical work done on this vehicle is uh, the clutch plate was changed and the timing belt as per the company indication. When it came up, we changed the timing belt. and the clutch plate was changed it did not die we changed it because we knew that now it was going to undergo even more load and under, even more stress so that's it so it was changed as a regular procedure when the dealership recommended so coming around the front it is running a deluxe model arb uh, sorry deluxe model iron man bull bar and uh, the pending bit is it needs a winch it used to have a steel rope winch but now we're all shifting to synthetic ropes so you can see the rollers are already there but uh, we'll be getting uh, a new winch for this one very soon. Uh, we've got uh, Baha LP6 lookalikes. These are Chinese lamps. Decent illumination. And as per the norms, we have to keep them covered at all times. So these are the lamps. Pretty good. They've got a full-time amber filter. And they do the job very well. Also, it comes with the halogen uh, fog lamps from Iron Man. So they're very nice and powerful and they're actually very well positioned. LED DRLs, LED turn signals. So that's about it on the bumper. So, and this matches the Hilux as well. 
So this generation, the previous generation Hilux and the Toyota Fortuner, they all take the same bull bar. Uh, the bug deflector is there. This is one of my favorite features. I love these on all vehicles. When traveling on a highway, these are very, very useful. Uh, so what happens is, so this is actually going to deflect the, you can call the, the, the stream of air away from your windshield. And it actually does make a lot of difference. Two same vehicles, one with and without the bug deflector. The one without the bug deflector is going to have lots more insects and bugs dead on your uh, windshield. I, you can you can say you will be even saving bug lives if you have this. You won't get them splattered over your windscreen. But otherwise, it helps you keep the windshield clean also. That's the main purpose. Some really like it, some don't. But I'm one of the people who really appreciate the way a bug deflector looks. Uh, other than that, the antenna is visible. Uh, this one is also using a Bill 2 by President. Same fixed antenna and uh, that's about it. Other than that, on this side, the snorkel is visible. This was uh, supplied by Blue Garage. Very simple uh, injection molded plastic. It's not a fiber snorkel. Working snorkel, flush fit goes well. Uh, I'm glad it says the correct engine model, even though it says Hilux. Though, so this came with the snorkel itself. Other than that, on the exterior, there's not much changes. Another good addition that I always like on vehicles is the rain deflector. When you're in good weather, there's nothing like driving with the windshield, uh, with the windows rolled down by a few inches. You don't need any AC or uh, that, that doubles for air circulation inside also. Uh, yes, the wheels. So this is a set of Lensos. We've had them for a very, very long time. Simple neat looking 8j wheels and they really complement the vehicle very tough wheels they've been through everything never had an issue so these are simple 17 by 8j zero offset wheels and they run very well and it's running the stock size 265 65 r17 bf goodrich tires uh, these if you can look at the the tread depth left these have done like a good 50,000 kilometer and a lot of road trips in that and they still have decent life left on them. And now coming to the main bit, uh, this one is running a set of uh, Ironman nitro gas suspension front and rear. And it is also running a set of B springs to accommodate for uh, the additional bull bar and uh, winch weight in the front. In the rear, we've got A springs and nitro gas shockers that is to take the the rear to keep it slightly on the comfortable side. Uh, there's there's a couple of other major upgrades that have been done that I would really like to show. Another thing which is missing on this one is we still have to make a nice uh, towing point for the rear because the bolt-on ones that come they really take it take the you know the bar below the bumper and that kind of looks untidy. So I've never really liked that. Uh, this is the most interesting bit in, in, in the entire vehicle. So what we've done is we've uh, removed the third row seats. So after removing the third row seats, we've got uh, waterproof plywood, waterproof plywood, and then we've riveted in uh, a nice checkered aluminum sheet. So this makes for a very nice tough surface. So you can keep uh, all sorts of luggage while traveling. It is almost as good as a pickup truck deck. And along with that, the mounts for the rear seats, uh, we've fixed these hoops and you can, these are used to uh, secure the luggage with the ratchet straps, bungee cords, anything can work. So we've got very neat four uh, securing points also. And this uh, happily takes a fridge, it takes all sorts of material that is otherwise going to destroy the floor. Plus. The utility of a level floor is, is always amazing because otherwise, you know, there's lots of cuts and grooves and the contours are different because the seats have to go in. So this makes for a very, very useful piece of hardware. Uh, it's very easily bolted in. We just had to get the shape cut and uh, you can see these four bolts. So these four bolts go directly into the bolts that actually were used to mount the seat in. And that's about it. So it is nice and secure. It's been there for close to two and a half, three years. Never had a rattle issue or anything. And uh, it's been serving the purpose very, very beautifully. Uh, I'll quickly take you around the inside. If you can come that side, I'll show you the interior as well. So 
so this right here is our uh, bill 2 this is the radio this is the latest one that works very very well inside it's a neat spacious vehicle bare minimum electronics and bare minimum features just enough to you know get you from one place to the other happily you've got steering mounted controls uh, the seat covers were upgraded uh, a few years back looks very plush very comfortable ride and uh, the stereo has been upgraded because these ones came with a simple cd changer and there used to be no display uh, due to the lack of a display this didn't have a reversing camera as well so the main aim for getting this android 9 inch unit was that it enabled it to play uh, music from bluetooth and also it gave a nice hd reverse camera that's about it all other functionalities they're also there uh other than that uh, even though this is like a sleeper vehicle there's a couple of uh, performance mods that have been done one is uh, it's running a pedal tuner this is by hikit australia so it comes with four modes and nine settings and there's there's a lot of other variants in that this we normally run at 3 4 or 5 that that's about it that it makes tons of power and this takes away that initial slight lag that might be there and the other thing to fix that we are also using a diesel tronic unit uh, that's been on the vehicle from the last 50 60000 kilometers and we've had zero issues and it runs and pulls like any other brand new vehicle power performance speed there is no nothing lacking in on that front and um, this is probably the first choice for a passenger whenever we go on a trip because the the combination of uh, shockers and coils in this one is so good that uh, anybody who does not even understand what a suspension does can definitely appreciate and does appreciate the way it runs especially once loaded it really flies and it is very very smooth on the highway it is very smooth on the broken patches as well so uh another thing that i forgot yes uh one of the major major upgrades that i really forgot to mention is if you can come around the front so we've got a full uh four pieces of underbody armor that is by arb that was imported from australia around 3 years back so thanks to viji from swastik fabs the underbody is come in it, it's covered practically everything that you can break including your uh, um, your sump your transmission it is even covering your transfer case so everything is solid and it is really nice and heavy thick metal and it's got those uh, bends and corrugation so it, it in itself is very very strong so at par or uh, i think at par with the same unit that we've got on the hilux as well that was by iron man this is top quality stuff and uh, again no fitting issues no rattles and this is a very very loved platform all over the world it's a very standard vehicle so the kind and quality of parts that we get they're very well engineered and there's no desi jugaad parts going on this vehicle so i think 5 and a half 6ish maximum for a clean vehicle and uh, i think another 4 to 5 lakhs in upgrades on the vehicle and this makes for an ultimate sub 10 lakh or a 10 lakh overlanding vehicle because looking at the car industry scenario today there's nothing practically that you can buy for 10 lakhs but if you're not living in delhi ncr area everywhere else in the country these are legal to own and drive there's no restriction of uh, diesel car ownership anywhere else and even today i don't think there is any vehicle which comes close to being a safe and a reliable overlanding vehicle i i i think in spite of the age the first generation fortuner would still be my top pick we've got two of these in the group this is a silver one we've also got uh, a a gray one that has pretty similar mods the bumper doesn't have a hoop again an arb underbody same pedal tuner and uh, upgraded wheels tires everything and i i think nothing can come close to this vehicle in terms of the kind of service that is available the kind of availability of parts that is there and the way these have been built i i i, I won't be quoting something wrong i'm not sure but i i believe the first first ones were uh, a cbu import from thailand that's what i've heard i'm not sure about that but uh, it definitely feels like a cbu 
and uh, it's a very solid built vehicle you won't get rattles after age and mileage actually has no role to play in the longevity of this vehicle 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh and if the basic maintenance is on point you are sorted for another 3 4 5 lakhs you you really can't um, outdrive a fortuner out of its engine age i believe these are always these are always always willing to run and um, i have not seen one fortuner that has died because of being used too much and they are still around for very very good prices and we will try to do a video of driving it around and a few driving impressions as well I uh, will try to add that to this video itself thank you so we have taken the fortuner out for a spin and just trying to show you the way it runs we will go looking for a little rough patch if we can you know find and show you how it handles there Otherwise, in terms of performance, I I am really, really happy with this vehicle. And it will put a smile on your face the minute you drive it, the kind of pull that it has. And, of course, being an all-time 4x4, that really changes, you know, the way it runs. Especially once you're in a slippery, a sliding surface. We'll try to look for those uh, yellow, uh, uh, those annoying... Uh, speed bumps we'll drive over them if we can you know slightly demonstrate how it runs otherwise for cruising speeds with this setup 115 120 um, that's the maximum they'll any which ways allow you on a highway it is very very confident another upgrade that i forgot to mention in uh, when we were covering the upgrades on this vehicle was that this first generation vehicle was it was known to have a poor braking system so this has discs in the front and drums in the back so it, it didn't have a very very confident braking system so an in-house upgrade on these is uh, to the 2015-16 model uh, two-wheel drive automatic fortuners that came they had a bigger uh, brake master cylinder and uh, we've upgraded the brake booster and the brake master cylinder to a 2015-2016 automatic uh, Fortuner and that has completely changed the way it brakes. Of course, we switched over to the entry level uh, Brembo pads and uh, along with that, we went for uh, the brake booster upgrade and that's about it. So we've got that annoying yellow bump coming up. So with these suspensions, the idea is to not slow down and you just drive over it. And you actually notice not even a 10% thing of what actually you would on any other vehicle. So that's what I always say with an upgraded suspension, the, the whole idea is to unlearn the way you drive because normally we would halt or we would rather pause or slow down for, you know, uh, a broken patch of road or a speed bump. But on these, it actually becomes comfier when you're kind of floating over the obstacles and very quick to accelerate it'll since it's a four wheel drive it won't give you a wheel spin but uh, you can definitely feel the pull and it, it really doesn't lack in power at all a lot of air filter upgrade options are also available but uh, what we've experienced with the, the fortuner is some is something very unique so whenever we've been on trips so we've got a habit of cleaning all uh, air filters before going to bed so on all vehicles that are traveling we'll dust out the air filters the way this one ha the, the construction of the air box on this fortuner is such that no matter how dusty a terrain we've driven in this fortuner's air filter will be least dirty it's like a centrifugal thing it comes in uh, like in a swirl pattern or something but it, it is always the cleanest air filter, uh, no matter what. So whenever we, uh, you know, whenever we've cleaned the air filters, this one has been the cleanest. So we've got a little rough patch. We'll try to go slightly fast. And so this is the thing. If you look at the road and if you look at the way the vehicle is going, so it's a completely, you know, it actually doesn't seem to be true because the way the road is broken and the way the patch is broken you know it is actually it, it runs very very smoothly 
so we'll try to go over the same patch once again and uh, so that you can actually see how broken it is our government is actually very progressive so it's hard to find broken roads but uh, you know so i'm trying to go over the most rough possible patch and you know you won't even notice that it's there So we'll take a shortcut here. We'll just go over. And there you go. So it's doing all of it very comfortably at a good pace in second gear without really bothering you with, you know. So that drop was like a two and a half, three foot drop, even though it was kind of soft. But uh, still, it's very confident. That's the point we, you know, we wanted to highlight and the kind of power that it offers and at the kind of RPM that it offers that power is simply phenomenal with the upgraded, uh, with the pedal tuner and with the upgraded, uh, uh, that piggyback ECU with the race dynamic set, it really changes the way this vehicle handles. You might find them to be sluggish. Uh, maybe in the stock form but all that we've done to this one is all fresh fluids and uh, the manifold has been cleaned the EGR has been cleaned and it's been given a new lease of life and that's about it and that's practically all you need to do on a Toyota vehicle the more you meddle with the basics you know I, I think the more complicated it gets this is as simple as you can do a vehicle for overlanding because overlanding is not like rock crawling, you know. The vehicle has to be practical through and through. So, now we'll be doing a bump at a slow speed. And you will feel how still is felt. Same thing if done at the right pace. So, there's like a sweet spot. Once you hit that sweet spot, or once you understand where that sweet spot of pace is, you will be simply flying over obstacles. So, all in all... I think value for money is is an understatement. This is, you know, this I would I would pick this over or any any other option as well. Very very reliable and the kind of spare backup that is available is of course you know we're all aware of that. So that being said, I think we can conclude the video here. Uh, the highway cruising is, is any which way spot on. So we thought of not doing it but uh, regular broken patches regular bumps and rough patches while traveling i don't think there's any other vehicle that is as confident as this one and especially what always gets ignored is the all-time 4x4 which is which is like you know which actually sets this vehicle apart because once you start looking for an all-time 4x4 suv option in india there aren't many it's just that the vehicle is so common, so it gets ignored and taken for granted. But otherwise, the, the all-time 4x4 uh, option in this vehicle, it is, it is simply something that sets it apart. And anyone looking for a, a safe, reliable, all-time 4x4 overlanding vehicle, I don't think you need to look at anything further than the first generation manual 4x4 Fortuner. So... I, I am a big time fan and especially another thing that I forgot to mention it's got a massive fuel tank I think it takes like 85 uh, liters of fuel this is one vehicle which we never have to top up from a jerry can with this kind of fuel you actually don't need to carry additional jerry cans on, on this one compared to the Isuzu which has you know barely a 50 liter capacity so even that from that aspect it's a very very sorted vehicle so Anybody who's looking for, you know, an overland build, a traveling vehicle, uh, capable and reliable is the word. I think uh, you definitely need to, you know, look into the first generation Fortuner. Uh, we'll try to cover the other one as well. We've got a dark grey one with mods done along the same lines. But we'll definitely try to cover that as well. And do share your comments and feedback. Thank you.